Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. So, there's a new series in your guys' hands today. When Trade Tuesday Season 1 ended, I asked you guys, do you want me to start over or do you want me to continue? I thought, hey, maybe we could do both and birth a series called Swap Sunday, essentially the higher end version of Trade Tuesday, and any end result of Trade Tuesday would be kicked into this series, which is essentially the road to a burst. So if you would like to see me continue to trade these instruments, I need to get 1,000 likes on this video as well as 1,000 comments. That's the real kicker. So if you're leaving a like, definitely remember to leave a comment too if you would like to see this series. So I already did a test run and I traded the R8 from season one of Trade Tuesday. Here's that story. Facebook Marketplace. I had my Les Paul Modern listed and somebody offered me a 69 Relic Strat for it. He was asking me about the condition, so I sent him a link to that video and that's when he realized, <gasps> I'm talking to Trogly. <laughs> that happens so many times. People just aren't expecting me to be on their local Facebook marketplace. But unfortunately, I already had a deal kind of worked out with a guy that I deal with a lot that's semi-what local on the modern. He ended up taking that one home. But since he knew who I was, he was like, how about we trade for the R8? Now, obviously the R8 had a little bit more value as compared to the 69 Relic Strat. So we had initially agreed on about $500 extra. It was a holiday weekend, so he was out and away. But when he got back, he didn't really want to include extra cash. So he offered up this Taylor 210E Deluxe. Now, normally I just would have took the cash and let this be, but the Taylor 210E series is close to my heart for one reason. And that reason, it's my personal Taylor acoustic. This is my one guitar that I really just won't sell because, you know, it's worth more sentimentally to me. But this is just the standard version, the Taylor 210E. So getting my hands on the deluxe version, I thought, hey, wouldn't that be a cool little video here to compare the two of them? Now, before we do that, I'm going to let him tell you the story behind these instruments. Unfortunately, I was a, a dumbo. <laughs> I deleted the footage, but at least I still have the audio. And definitely check out his band. He left me a shirt. It's called Alter Stoned. Yeah, so I've just been waiting for one of these to come around. So I was happy to find this one here. The year's perfect, the sunburst is perfect, and uh, bought me some uh, Brandon Wound pickups. And I've been looking for a guitar to put them on. And uh, me and my wife saw this guitar actually, and she said that uh, they would go good with the pickups, the way the binding has aged. So yeah, that's what these are gonna go on this weekend actually. We'll be putting it on here, but what a clean guitar. and. I'm excited, I got an R9 and now I got an R8. Yeah, I got a 69 reissue Relic, Heavy Relic, as you can probably tell, and 210E Deluxe. I've uh, had these guitars. This one here for about uh, three or four months now. This one here, about the same probably. Just wanted a change actually. And I'm a big fan of the R8, so trading was, was easy when I seen the one he had for sale, so. The Stratocaster has already sold, so this will be the only one that is up for trade at this point in time or sale. You can check out the link in the description. But if you do have a trade offer due to Reverb's terms of service, email me directly at tradetrogly at gmail.com. But now let's go ahead and compare these two instruments. First off, what both of these have in common, they're a dreadnought body style, no cutaway. They have a Sitka spruce top paired with rosewood veneered sides. And what that means is it looks like it's rosewood, right? And it is, kind of. It's a sandwich of rosewood poplar rosewood. So think 335S, because those guys are maple poplar maple bent into shape. So that gives you kind of an idea of how they do that. They feature Taylor's Expression System 2 with ebony fretboards and a sapele neck, or sapele depending on where you're located at. And both of these, to my surprise, are made in Mexico. That's something I didn't realize until I was researching this video that I bought a Mexican tailor. I always thought this was USA made. But now let's talk about the vast differences between the deluxe and the standard model. 
The first one you can kind of see right away, the headstock veneers are different. The standard one is a rosewood veneer, whereas the deluxe gets a nice dark ebony. But something I don't quite understand is the truss rod cover gets three screws on the deluxe and two on the regular. Personally, I think the two looks much better, but that's because, you know, <laughs> I have a Gibson background here, so that's why I always look for. The truss rod cover on this one is actually black plastic. And spec wise, they said this was also supposed to be plastic, but to me, it feels like rosewood. And I bought this brand new, not used, so I know it's stock. Fretboard material is the same, but you will see that the inlays are different. They have what they call the small diamonds on the deluxe version here, and dot inlays on the standard one. Personally, I like these inlays better. Now, as far as the face of the guitar goes, they look very similar, right? But it's the sound hole that's different. This one kind of has like a mother of pearl looking ring around it. I'm not really sure what the material is. Whereas this one just has, you know, standard acoustic rings kind of laid on it there. The other thing that's different is you see those three little notches or whatever they are between the pins and the saddle. Apparently these are used kind of like a pickup spring to adjust how sensitive the expression system is. But my standard version does not have that. Next, perhaps most noticeably, is the deluxe version. It gets a full gloss finish on the back and sides here. Whereas this got satin. And to be honest with you, that's why I ended up buying this guitar. I mean, the story behind this one is I went to Guitar Center planning to spend like $3,000 on just a really nice sounding acoustic. But what I actually decided to buy was this Taylor because it just blew all the high-end Gibsons and Martins out of the water as far as what Guitar Center had in stock. So that's why I've always kept this Taylor 210E around. So besides the gloss finish, another small difference that's kind of hard to tell unless you look at the spec sheet is the backs are completely different here. This one, it's kind of like the sides, it's a veneer. So it's not actually a two piece back like it looks. Whereas this one, apparently it is. And the last difference I could find is the Deluxe comes with a proper hard shell case. It's a really nice, you know, red interior here. Whereas the regular one comes with what Taylor calls the hard bag. But oh my goodness, I love these things, guys. They are the best thing ever. It might look like a gig bag and Taylor does make soft ones that are gig bags, but these hard bag things, it's the convenience of carrying a gig bag, but it still has the firmness of a hard shell case. I absolutely love this thing, even though I was initially disappointed that I was getting a bag and not a case when I bought this new in 2013. Now again, according to the website, both of these are discontinued, so you can't necessarily find them brand new, but there's still a few shops that have them around. It looks like the deluxe version sells around a thousand bucks and the standard still goes for its new price around six to eight hundred bucks. And I think it's because they're just fantastic guitars. I was at Sweetwater yesterday. Oh, does that mean we get some new 2019 soon? And I was talking to one of the guys and he was telling me he has a 210 in a Koa top. And he said that was his favorite. So if you're looking for a really nice budget, like you don't want to spend too much, but you still want a substantial instrument. I highly suggest the Taylor 210Es, but you know, I don't really have experience with too much else. So which one do I end up preferring? You know, this deluxe, it's beautiful. I could easily swap it out for my standard one and put it in the trading series and not change too much. But I think I still prefer this one simply because, you know, sentimental reasons. So I'm gonna keep this one as I have. People are always asking me, what are my keeper guitars? Well, I guess it'd be my classical and my acoustic. Everything else can come and go. But these are the only two left out of my original collection before I started dealing. However, ultimately, I think I prefer the sound of this one. It's a little bit bassier. But now that we know a little bit about the differences and we got all the specs out of the way, let's go ahead and end this out with a sound comparison test.
Which one did you prefer? The deluxe or the standard? Definitely leave me a comment in the comment section. Put a like on this video if you'd like to continue seeing the high-end trades. Or hey, it doesn't bother me if we don't do it. Trade Tuesday is always fun enough just as is. Thank you Troglodytes for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. So I would like to go over the condition of this one just really briefly. You still have a satin finish on the face of the headstock. The frets really don't show too much wear or anything. I would suggest maybe putting some fresh strings on here. I don't think I have any acoustic strings on hand or else I would. There's no like huge gouges or anything in the top, but you definitely have some play wear here. I'll just run the light over it so you can see. It's a nice light colored top on this one. Back of the headstock is also in clean shape. I don't really see any large areas of wear here. And the back of the neck, the only thing I have to say is there is a very light impression by the fifth fret. I'm not sure when you guys will be able to see it. I mean, it doesn't affect playability at all, but you have a few impressions right there. And there's also a few right here, likely from like a capo or something. This was initially a satin finish neck, but it kind of feels more glossy, so it's definitely been played a little bit. This just might be how the Mexican tailors are made, but there's always like a small little gap right here, and then you see like where the binding comes together. Both of these tailors are the same, so it's nothing to worry about, but definitely want to disclose it in case it's your first one. And as far as the condition goes on the sides, you do have some scuffs. Like I was unsuccessful in cleaning these off. And some of them actually almost look like they're under the finish. I'm not quite sure there. So not too bad on the side that you do not see. However, once you get down here, here's what I'm talking about, a scuff right there. And then up here, there's a bunch of those. So, I mean, it's relatively pretty clean here and ready for a good new home.